Hello, everybody. What up? Hey, Doug. Hey. Hey, welcome to Rundgren Radio Virtual Vir Vision. <laughs> Tonight is the first episode of Behind the Scenes. Of course, we don't yet know what the next episode of Behind the Scenes will be. But in case you don't know, we're going to visit with Kazim Sultan about his radio show. He has a radio show. Where you been? What's up with that? I don't know, Doug. Anyway, it's on Radio Woodstock dot com and it's on sunday nights don't worry you're not going to miss a single second of it because it's going to be following our show on the radio or on the web uh at 7 p.m eastern time but we'll be finished by then yeah 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 so it's sunday it's october 11th and we've got great great news to share again if you've been under a rock <laughs> jesse gress got a lung transplant this week and oh, I'm getting chills talking about it right now. Mm -hmm. It's doing very well. So uh, keep sending those prayers up or, or whatever it is that you do. Cause it's working. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Way to go, Jesse. I, yeah. How about we dedicate tonight's show to him? Huh? Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Cool. Yep. So uh, tonight we're going to uh, be visiting with Chasm and his producer, Bob about, how the radio show came about and we'll also get to uh, get a sneak peek into his private studio and Ooh. see how he does what he does yeah but we, we got to get to first things first though so doug i think you got some news on some cotton goodies let's talk about it so i know people probably think i forgot but i didn't so um for our labor day weekend party we're still waiting on the shirts the guy said mid-october so it's mid-october so maybe this week i'm hoping mm-hmm uh, we'll find out. I got everything ready. The envelopes are ready to ship. The mask. Nice. Ooh. Already. If it looked like I had a hole in it, that's because of the green screen, not because it has a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got green screens now. Look at yeah. us. All fancy. We got the laminate. Let's see here. I'm not getting that very good, am I? There it is. There you go. Laminate with chasm on it. Logo on the back. So, yeah, I'll have all that for you if you are eligible for that from the uh, birthday party bash that we did Labor Day weekend. So hopefully coming soon. We'll see. Yeah, that feels like that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. Hmm. Yeah, but, you know, the way things are working right now, everything seems to be backed up in production and uh, shipping. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, I know one thing you've been looking for, Doug, uh, you're – and for a future show, you want to show, do one of your little music videos with people with their Todd related tattoos, right? Todd Utopia tattoos. I've already got several submissions. We'll take more. Uh, email them to me at Doug at RunganRadio.com. That will be for a future show. We also need Cruiser Mail. Mm -hmm. Some greetings for our Halloween party. So yeah. uh, please wear a costume. Uh, email me about where to send those. We got a Dropbox for that. Holly Duthie does that for us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So we will need those for Halloween. That party is on Halloween night, of course. And we are going to have what, Cruiser Mail? You're going to make me say it. It's so difficult to say. Okay. We are going to have a live concert right here. Halloween night, like you said, featuring the Hermits of Mink Halloween. And they will be performing the <laughs> Hermit of Mink Hollow album. Nice job. In yeah. full. That's a so, tough one. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you yeah. had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be from uh, Boston in the uh, Regent Theater. Um, but we're going to have some other stuff. Yeah. In Massachusetts. But mm -hmm. it'll be like you've got a front row seat. You you can watch right here on your YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching from, it would be nice and easy. And it's a, it's a free party for mm -hmm. us. Uh, free for you. Open bar, um, <laughs> in your bar yeah. and it's free. But if you'd like to help out these out of work musicians, which we hope you can at least a little bit, mm -hmm. where can they, uh, donate? Huh, Doug? Right down here. Go find me. Just search for our, our virtual vision. That's our current deal. So, you know, topic we prefer not to talk about, but we're going to just for a minute. Mm 
So this is to uh, help us pay for rent for the theater and to pay for the band and the theater people. And if we raise, if we hit our goal, we're going to give some to Todd's band support. So, you know, the guys, waiting you know, for the band support. You love it, don't you? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Randy the roadie, Hans the light guy, and George the sound guy, those guys, they just found out they're not going to get to go out in January and February. Just like we're not going to get to see those shows we all had tickets for. No, so, uh, if the show is free, like Mel said, we're going to keep doing this donation thing as long as it works because we want it to be free for people who are uh, financially affected by COVID and can't um, or shouldn't be contributing to something like this. So uh, we got your back, you know, just if you can, if you got a $500 in refunds from Ticketmaster, you can throw a little bit our way <laughs> for this GoFundMe. We got a suggested ticket price, $30 for $50. You will get, it looks like it will look something like this, a hard ticket from the nice. theater. Very nice. Fun. Yes. And then a laminate. That's one side. Um, the other side will have the uh, J Po pumpkin hermits logo. So we'll have that for those people. And we appreciate all you can do to help out with that. Yeah, we do. And they do too. So uh, Doug just mentioned pumpkins. We're going to be doing a little pumpkin thingy on Halloween night as well. So it's not just going to be, Seeing the band play, we're going to have some fun stuff, too. We're going to have Veronica Morano has been very, very nice to to help us out. Uh, she's done it before, so she's an expert. We're going to have a Todd O'Lantern display of some sort. Yeah. So I believe that the parameters are you carve a pumpkin or, or paint a pumpkin in some way uh, with a design that is somehow Todd or Utopia related. So. Yeah. You know, you just kind of go with that theme. Mm -hmm. But let me give you the address, and she'll probably put it in the chat room as well, if, where you want to send your photos of your pumpkins. And it's VJ4, the number four, utopia at yahoo.com. And thanks in advance to uh, Veronica for helping out with that. And let's see, you mentioned that we're going to want some video greetings from fans. Yep. Our viewers. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And we would like you to be wearing a costume. Yes. You can have your pets with you or <laughs> your toddle head or, you know, any, anything you want. Sure. And, uh, you know, short and sweet. Uh, so send those, those videos, your home, homemade videos to where's that going to go? Holly. That's going to go to Dropbox to Holly. Yeah. Just ask me for the address or look for it on our Facebook. Gotcha. gotcha. Too, too much to uh, post here. You'll never remember it. Yeah. No, unless you got your, you know, your big chief tablet and your, your ink pencil with you. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what, uh, what else we got? We got, we're working on another fan cave. Episode three will be out hopefully soon. Uh, we got a couple volunteers. We need a couple more. Uh, email me if you want to be in on that. That is uh, visiting people's homes where we go in and check out their collectibles. So if you're interested in that, let us know. And other than that, I think that's a wrap. Now we got a video tonight to show you, though, of we had fans submit photos with Chasm. We're going to play that before we get into our interview. I uh, love which, your you music know. videos. I love yeah. them. Yeah. So we got that. And then um, we got a clip of Chasm in his studio. And then we'll wrap it up and then start working on our next thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you guys enjoy. And Jesse, by the way. Get well and Mary Lou, uh, our, our virtual arms are wrapped around both of you guys. That's it. So here comes the chasm video with a song that is appropriate for our times. And we'll see you on the, towards the end of the show. Here we go. some pain that might be true but also a blessing when there's so much to gain when times get tough the strong survive that's just how it goes so much forgiven in reach down inside
that's just how it goes There is no giving in Reach down inside There's just one thing to know Yeah All through the good times And bad times We can survive them all And we will shine on strong Shine on the darkness We'll carry on When all the stars fall Stand tall There will be light again All right, everybody. We got Bob and Chasm here from Radio Woodstock. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome to my world, as Chasm says, for his radio show. We're going to find out today behind the scenes. We're going to look at how does this happen? What do they do? If you you might remember when we were young, er, we would you know DJs would go in, they'd work for eight hours a day or whatever, and spin records and do these different things. But today, technology is different. So um, we want to get educated and find out what that's like. So without further ado, Bob, what is, uh, Kazmi, you got something? Yeah, I just wanted, I just want to preface this whole thing with, um, I think it's, I, I think it would be interesting for, the, for everyone to know how this whole show became, uh, came about. Yeah. And basically what, what happened was we were, um, we were in rehearsals for the, the, uh, was it the global tour? I think it was, or or the one after that, um, the White Knight. We were in rehearsals up in Woodstock for the White Knight tour, and we were rehearsing at the video studio, which has over the last uh, twenty years become home to WDST Radio Woodstock. Uh, I was in the the canteen area, having a, a making a cup of coffee or buttering a piece of toast, I, I don't, doing something. And there was the uh, program director and, and one of the marketing people down in the uh, cafeteria area. Um, and uh, he knew who I was. He introduced himself, a, a guy by the name of Joel Simon, wonderful guy, and said, uh, uh, and mentioned to me that, by the way, if, uh, if there's anything I can ever do for you, <laughs> let me know. Um, I'd be happy to help. Uh, and I, I was like, okay, that's fine. He was, it, we had a nice 10, 15 minute chat. Move forward a year later, uh, and um, I'm up in Woodstock with my manager, Scott Kushner. And uh, I said to Scott, uh, who, who Scott had a, a summer home up in Woodstock, and I said, by the way, uh, WDST, the uh, program director at the uh, station manager, uh, the station manager at WDST said, if there's anything he could ever do, if, the, if, if anything, uh, if he could help in any way, um, by all means, get in contact with him. Scott ran with that, immediately set up a meeting with Joel and, uh, and, and pitched him my radio show. And that's how it started. Then we brought Bob in, Bob Crane, okay. right here, um, as producer. And uh, Bob is is responsible for all the content that goes into the show. Um, so there you go. That's that's the starting point. So it started. All right. So Bob, did you work there before, or you just started working for the Chasm Show? I I have a radio background. I worked in. Uh, I started my career in radio. Nearly, you know, you hate to think about it, but it was probably about 35, 40 years ago, at a um, radio station on Long Island, WLIR and then moved on to WBCN in Boston as the music director. And it was an on-air personality at both stations as well. And then on to K-Rock in New York when it was a rock station. Yeah. <laughs> Howard Stern was on in mornings and we were begging him to play music all the time. That never happened. Mm -hmm. And 
my career has taken me in a lot of different paths, and radio has always been my passion. And here we are. This is this is it. So you do you work for Radio Woodstock now, or you just work? No, for I, I'm 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 in, totally independent. Independent producer, independent okay. Independent marketing person, radio person, totally an independent uh, part of the whole puzzle. So you you were around, you know, you know the days when you had to go in and spin records and whatnot, and you've seen a lot of changes. So tell us a little bit about how it works today. Like how do you and Chasm decide what songs you're going to play? And do you get free? Do you get to do what you want? And you know, back in the day, I know they used to kind of give you a certain songs you could play. How do y'all make those decisions? Well, yes, back in the day on the old progressive rock stations, uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to kind of bridge a gap between the old and the new. I was fortunate enough to start really early on in my career. So I was part of a radio station where we, you know, had a, a, a totally open canvas to paint on. And that canvas included, you know, a music library of copies. So um, let's get back to your question. Chasm and I and Scott Kushner, Chasm's manager, and one of the other producers, Max Lenawan, just, you know, we have weekly calls. We, we talk about different topics. We talk about different um, features that we could do, what we can come up with. It's a, it's a total team effort. And the calendar plays a big part of it. What's happening, whose birthday, what's going on, what's happening in the world. Uh, I, you know, radio has always been theater of the mind, in my mind anyway, and it continues to be. So um, then and now, it, then we sat in the studio and we were able to pull anything we wanted. And that changed a little bit when consultants came in and started giving playlists and the playlists tightened up and we had to you know, abide by their rules. We have no rules here. It's my world and welcome to it, which is unbelievably fantastic. Yes, so, in a free reign. They so a so w that leads me to ask about the format of the show, which is, you know, Chasm, you do segments where you do a, a UK song and a USA song, or you do the on an, on any given album, what is the opening number on that album and mm -hmm. what's the closing number? Did you come up with all that or was it a team effort? Um, I like Chasm answer. Yeah, I mean, you, no, I didn't come up with that uh, with those with those things. I mean, we suggest things to each other, but those th those two uh, features that you're that you're referring to, Mel, that's Bob. Bob mm. came up with those ideas. Good uh, job, Bob. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, there's another. Uh, I, I think that Bob says, "Hey, he would, we, you know, on the phone, he'd say, hey, 'Hey, I'm, I'm thinking.'" What do you think about, you know, songs that uh, are on the B side of a single that become a bigger hit than the A side? And um, and then uh, I'm like, that's a great idea. I think I could I could name at least a half a dozen off the top of my head that are like that. And so we run with it with a feature like that. Everything is sort of um, is discussed. It's ve it's, a, it's a very democratic uh, team. So everything is discussed within in in house and then put into practice between Bob and Max, the other producer on the show, the producer and editor. Have you had a bunch of people hit you up, uh, old musician friends or fans, go play my song? song it's actually, <laughs> actually, you are incredibly, I just got off the phone <laughs> with, uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but it's a friend of mine who, who was working on a project and saying, I know you have a radio show. Would you, you know, any chance, I'm going to send you a song. Maybe you could play it on your show. And, and the show really doesn't work like that. Um, it's uh, as much as we can, we have complete free reign. And I don't think we could do, Bob, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you couldn't do this show on uh, on a corporate, on a clear channel station. Or, or I, I would tend to doubt that. Yeah. Um, as it is right now, without, uh, we, we've had calls with the radio station and they said, guys, you're doing great. Keep going. Just do, right. do what you're doing. And DST is a special place. Yeah. So that, that's so much appreciated. And then they've given us the free reign to be creative and be creative in the environment that we have. You know, so we could play uh, in the same show. We can play a song by Frank Sinatra and then later on in the show, play a song by Nine Inch Nails, you know, and, and, and somehow in the concept of my radio show or our radio show, 
uh, it, it makes sense, you know, because really for me as a musician, um, my my musical horizon is pretty broad, you know. I mean, I, I I've gone from playing for ten years and making records with Todd and Utopia to three years with Joan Jett, you know. It's like complete opposite ends of the musical spectrum. So um, so I'm pretty proud of that uh, of that part of my career, and and I think that uh, that the radio show reflects that. Do you play a lot of stuff from the bands you used to be in? You play Meatloaf, Joan Jett, Cherry Vanilla, all that stuff. We we did uh, we did a feature uh, for the first what, the ten or fifteen shows, Bob. Somewhere close to that. Yeah, where where we were playing songs from uh, albums that I worked on, uh, and no. No. and then we kind of moved away from that because we don't want to get in, we don't want to let anything get too get too over overdone. Mm -hmm. So. Has the feedback been good? I know you get some chat room conversation going during the shows. How do you think it's been so far? Oh, well, I think it's been great. I, I mean, um, you know, everybody that does listen to the show says that it's the highlight of their Sunday evening. And I, I that makes me feel really, really good. Um, because the thing that, that I've noticed, and Bob notices it too, is that, uh, you know, we, uh, we listen to the show. We kind of listen to the show together. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, uh, at Sunday, at, se at seven o'clock on Sunday, I'm in my kitchen with uh, with my Alexa on. Sorry. Oh, that's okay, Mel. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going through. Uh, we're, we're, you know, chatting back and forth on the phone uh, about the show and how it's going and and what we say. And before you know it, the show is over. Mm -hmm. So it's an hour of radio that that goes by so quickly. And I think that. If it wasn't a good show, or if it was if it was a boring show, the hour would seem a lot longer than an hour. <laughs> had you did you uh, ever want to do this kind of thing, or did your manager come up with this idea based on that conversation, and you thought well, I could DJ, or did you think I've always wanted to DJ? Well, the the funny thing is, and 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 I mentioned this to uh, I, I was on the station for a live chat. They had a fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, and I was on and. And I said to Greg Gatain, the, the program director, that, um, uh, you know, I grew up with a radio on in my kitchen. My The, the AM radio was on from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. It was it was on in the kitchen the entire day. My parents always listened to talk radio. And then sometimes I'd switch it to, you know, 77 WABC, which was the, the Beatles station or WOR um, or uh, WABC. Um, yeah, yeah, 77 WABC. There was NBC, WOR. Um, uh, help me out here, Bob. What else was there in, in the 60s? Uh, well, um, you know, NEW came came up in about 68 on yeah. the FM progressive side. Right. And, and PLJ, which was ABC FM, came, was pretty prominent back then. Yeah. So that's where I got, you know, that's where I got all my all, all my new music from when I was a kid was from the radio. Yeah. Hmm. That's the way it used to be. So, Rob, y'all have to go. Do y'all ever go into the radio station, or is every everything just? Have you ever been to the radio station? Do you have you ever had to go, or do y'all do everything at home? Gasm has been to the radio station. I haven't. Um, really, don't necessarily have to be there. That, that's the uh, the beauty of it. I mean, most most mediums are operating today with everybody at home. I, even the the live news net networks are, are operating with people being home. It's changed the. the the, the whole pandemic has changed the world. Granted, radio changed before that, and you were able to do things a little bit more remotely. But um, I haven't been to the radio station. Chasm, I think, might have stopped by once or twice, but I haven't been there. Do you live near Woodstock, or are you way, way far away? Um, downtown, midtown Manhattan. So okay, not close. <laughs> what, what near is. Yes, I'm near, but not yeah. as near as most. About an hour and a half away. So you've been up there uh, several times, Casper. You go there, check it out one time. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, ever since the video studio turned into WDST, anytime I'm in Woodstock, you know, and ninety nine percent of the time that I'm up there is for work. Yeah. So, um, you know, I always stop in and say hi to people to the people at WDST. The, uh, the station's actually moving from that building to mm -hmm. another uh, another facility on Route Twenty Eight, which is. Yeah. The little conduit between the throughway, uh, uh, the New York State throughway, and and Woodstock, the town of Woodstock. So, 
The station is moving out of the uh, out, out of that building. So, do you do most uh, the recording of of you speaking to us listeners uh, from the home studio, Chasm? Or? Yeah, I do it from right right in the in the room that I'm in right now. As a matter of fact, um, I, I think I have a video clip for you guys. So you'll put that in here of me actually sitting at my recording desk and uh, and doing the voiceovers for the show that uh, or for whatever particular show. Look we're at you being up. all radio voiceovers. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're already on. Um, this is I think we're on show to this weekend is show 24, Bob. I'm on show 32. Oh. So I'm You're on show 30. In my mind anyway, my mind is percolating. So, <laughs> yeah. I think it's 24. Yeah, we start yeah. Um, I, on uh, May 3rd, May 3rd, 4th, Mother's Day around there. Right, right. So, you know, we, we've got we've got 24 shows under our belt right now, which is, I mean, for me, you know, looking back at the last 24 weeks of every single Sunday, I'm on the radio. You know, mm -hmm. I'm on a terrestrial radio station, which is really something, you know. It's like, that, there's not too many people that can say that, you know. No. And, uh, and I have a great time doing it. That's the best part. Do you see, how do you see this shaping out when you get back on tour, if that, you know, whenever that happens, which is going to be a while, but you know. Well, fortunately, I can do my part from pretty much anywhere. Um, it, it, you know, as long as I have a laptop and a microphone uh, and, uh, and a table read, um, I can, you know, I can go, I can say, okay, I have, uh, I have the, the promo that I do before every show. And then, um, and then I have the, the features that I announce, uh, that, you know, that Bob, uh, creates and then I put into practice and I kind of take what Bob writes and put my own spin on it. And, you know, so I could do it. I can do it from the, uh, the hotel room in Boise, Idaho. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So I, I would kill to be in Boise, Idaho right now. By the way. <laughs> it's that bad. Huh? It's, that bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So, so Bob, and, um, when y'all talk about the set list, for lack of a better term, for the shows, do y'all do this on the phone or by Zoom? How do y'all email? How do y'all duke this out? People, what are you going to play? Usually on, on the phone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a, you know, a, a set weekly call, but we, we talk almost daily, believe it or not. You know, mm -hmm. an idea will pop in, a song will pop into our heads, and we'll uh, we'll chat almost daily. But the, we have a weekly wrap up after the Sunday show on uh, Monday afternoons, just to go over what we like, what we didn't like, and then you know, we take it from there. Yeah. For yeah. instance, I mean, I just sent Bob an email last night. Did, did you get my email, by the way? I got them all. <laughs> yeah, I just sent him an email last night with about twenty songs that I think I'd like to have on the show. And they range from everybody from Aretha Franklin to um, Terry Reed to, uh, uh, you know, Jennifer Warren's Jennifer Warren, Rufus Wainwright. Yeah, Rufus Wainwright. Uh, he did get the email. The Beach Boys. The Beach Boys. Right. So these are song suggestions that I say, hey, I would love to play this song. I would love to okay, play so that. Okay, so let's one. take let's take uh, Rufus Wainwright. I know a lot of Todd fans and Utopia fans are fans of his. Veggie Girl loves him. A uh, bunch of people. Um, how did you decide that's somebody you want to be out of these 20 songs? Me? Per are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I am um, a huge Rufus Wainwright fan. Um, uh -huh. And uh, uh, I, I've been to see his show a couple of times. I've had dinner with him, and he's a, he's a really sweet guy. Um, and uh, it's just one of those artists that writes songs that you say, I wish I would have written that. <laughs> um, you yeah. know, I wish I could write a song like that, or I wish I could turn a phrase like he does, or I wish I could come up with a melody like that, you know? So he's one of those artists that, um, that I find fascinating. Elton John said that Rufus Wainwright is one of the greatest songwriters on the planet. So wow. Elton John says that about you as a songwriter. You're pretty good. You need to be on my radio show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. You two should do a show together sometime. Rufus and me? Yeah. I would Ooh. love to. He's got a new record out, actually. Did we play anything from his new... I think we did. Yes. Yes, we yeah. did. Do you the one who asked you to? Hey, Chasm. No. No. <laughs> no, no. I'm not that close with Rufus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, do you get... Um, okay, so let's see. That's a lot of different genres you were mentioning, so... 
you can go all over the place. Yeah, and and that's the beauty of, of of being on WDST is that we can do that. You know, if we were on K Rock or if we were on um, Q one hundred and four, we would not be able to do that. Our our playlist would be dictated to us by corporate. Well, yes, it definitely would be. But we're also, you know, we're also looking to take it beyond DST. We're looking to you know, hopefully, I don't want to use a corporate term, but get the show syndicated and have a lot more people start listening. And I think the beauty of it being on DST and the beauty of it as it is right now is that we are able to paint the picture with, you know, a wide a wide open canvas and there's nothing like that on the radio right now. I don't know anybody out there who's really doing a show that has that much freedom. And I think that that's a big selling point because generally people are bored shitless of what's going, what, what's on the radio right now. I mean, yeah, it's even, well, even serious. There was a different plan, but if you in the car a lot and you listen to it, it gets repetitive, just like regular radio, less ads, but you still hear the same songs by the same artists. They don't mix it up a lot. So and it's typically the hits, you know, and it, it, it's, it's good to have something where you get um, a mix of different kind of music and y'all get to pick whatever you want. Because I, I, I think back with your background, you probably thought you'd never see a day where that was going to be the case where you weren't having somebody telling you, you know, I got to play it this way. You got to play this song because it's popular, blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden you got all the freedom you want. It's fantastic. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. And we kind of, you know, I, I go back to it, you know, correlating it to an open canvas and just painting our picture. And that's really what we do. It, it's kind of, um, it's kind of wild, you know, kind of what would sound great after this or what, what, what musician played on that and played on this and back and forth, you know, that back and forth just keeps it kind of rolling together. Can, um, can chasm be difficult at times to work with? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think he's not, I, not at all. I, I mean, I, I've, I've worked with, a lot of a lot of difficult people. Yeah, he's right. not one of them. In life, yeah. but no, not at all. This Captain, is this is not WKRP Bob. in Cincinnati. No, this is actually but it's not. You know, no. Bob is pretty even. Uh, uh, I, I always I always start my my phone conversations with Bob uh, as I'm sorry to bother you, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be a pest, but. Yeah. Oh, wow. we're having a, we're having fun. It's radio, you know. It, it's kind yeah. of the beauty of being on terrestrial, being on radio, is that the hour's over. People enjoyed it, and we gave them a great hour of radio, and and it's done. And on to you know, on to creating another great hour after that. Yeah, it's, it's out there. Um, people to go back and listen to, but it's, once it's once it's done, it's you know. It's uh, again the beauty of radio. Well, I don't, I don't want to give Chasm a big head. Well, but the, but. He, he, uh, everything after everything after butt is bullshit. By the Chasm way, Chasm is Chasm is a looker. The ladies like to look at Chasm. Do y'all have any plans to do a, a, a virtual type radio show where you can see him and hear him talking and stuff? Well, virtual radio kind of sounds, you know, like like an old George Carlin line. You know, jumbo shrimp it's just, it's not any more on really um it's, uh it, i think the next the next thing really is a podcast um unless chasm has other plans i'll let him speak for that um you never know where it's going to go who knows you you mean a podcast um with music or without music well it's really hard as you know to get clearance for music for podcasts but as you've heard chasm has done some interviews and those interviews are a lot longer than the clips, obviously, that we've been playing. They're hour-long interviews. So mm -hmm. we have some really great pieces of conversation that are going to work really well for a, a podcast. And right now, it would be with the, you know, the regulations so tight on obtaining the rights for music on a podcast would be without music. But the uh, conversations hold up on their own. You know, it's two, two musicians just talking about their times together or talking about the music they've made and it, it works really well. For instance, I, uh, just the other day, um, about two, two and a half, three weeks ago, I was, uh, I interviewed Jason Faulkner uh, from Jellyfish and he plays with Beck now. Uh, and he's been with, in Beck's band for about 10 years. And nice. uh, Jason and I have been friends for uh, 20 years, I guess. And um, 
he's just a, he's a fascinating guy to speak to about record making and music and his background and and then uh, just the other day I spoke to Ricky Bird from Joan Jett's band and uh, Ricky and I spend an hour on the phone on a Zoom call that we chop up and we're going to put into a, a future show. So there's a lot of good interviews coming up. Yeah, you yeah, did. That, you did one with with uh, Willie Wilcox for his birthday. Yeah. Too. Uh-huh. Yeah, was there was more good. that we didn't get to hear? Oh yeah, absolutely. There was a whole. <laughs> I, I was on the phone with Willie for probably ninety minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and we only did maybe maybe seven or eight minutes of that uh, of that interview. Yeah. Yeah. The so that's interesting when you start because we're we're starting to have to do this. Of course, we did stuff with the with Rona Radio too, but. It takes a lot of time now to do these things. How much time do you think you'll have to put into these ready for this one hour on Sunday? How much time are you putting in? A lot. I, I, I can't really put a, a clock on it, but it's um, you're a hundred percent right. It's three, four hours a day sometimes. It takes me about that long. It takes me about that long to do my part on the show. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more work. Yeah. 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 But it's a labor of love. You know, it's like when you sit back and listen to it, 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 it makes, it makes the hard work worthwhile, you know, because it's like, yeah, yeah that's really cool. And the other so, thing too, that I wanted to mention is that, you know, I'm still, I'm still finding my sea legs. You guys, you and Mel have been doing this for what? 15 years now, 10 years, 15, <laughs> 14, years? 14, 14, years, 14, 14 years. Okay. So, yeah. you know, you, you, you have a radio show that you've been doing for a very, very long time. And for me, it's like I'm I'm used to being on on the on the other side, on this side of the microphone, yeah, not yeah. on your side of it, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a completely different animal when you're on your side of the microphone. Yeah. Do you have to do um, you do any kind of warm ups like you would for a, a concert to get your voice ready? Do no, I have a donut. Side? You just get on there and start talking. Huh? I, I have a donut usually. And Clear throat. You don't do I haven't like that. tried that. I'm going to try that next time. A donut? No, I, I don't really do anything. I, I, I think Bob, and Bob has suggested to me, he's like, you know, calm yourself before you sit down to record. Um, take a deep breath and, 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 and think that you're only talking to one person. And I'm like, that doesn't work for me. You know, I'm like, uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm in the middle of like, I got to go walk the dog and then sit down and do a radio show. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're having fun with it. We are. Um, Bob, we're glad you're helping Thanks. them out with it. And y'all are coming up with a good set list and keeping everybody interested, especially during these times when people are really looking for entertainment. It's good to hear that their Sunday nights are being made by this show and uh, that y'all are going to keep doing it. Even you know when touring starts back, I think people still want to listen to it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh. There's a doggy. Yeah. Hey. Hey, hey Pete. Hey, Pete. <laughs> So, 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 Chasm, I, I got to tell you, uh, during all this lockdown stuff, I have learned how to cook pretty well. And yeah. that is your fault or your, your responsibility because, yes, every Sunday night, six to seven, my local time, you are in my kitchen Aww. entertaining <laughs> me while I'm learning well, how to cook chop, something. Chopping broccoli? Chopping broccoli. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Every once That's in a great, while. Mel. That's good. Good, good, good for you. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe someday if you ever get to leave your part of the wor- world and come to Dallas, Texas, we'll cook a meal together. We will. And I'll chop the broccoli. Okay. Okay. Why don't right. you listen to the radio show? We're going to have some holiday recipes for you. coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. right, We're going to do a holiday cooking show. Holiday Great. Cooking show. Yeah. Great. So what's the name? What's the name of your radio show? Go ahead and pimp it for us. It's my world and welcome to it. And, uh, there's some T-shirts out there for sale and uh-huh. on the Facebook page, so check it out. It's really a cool. It's a cool shirt that Danny designed, and um, and then you'll get to see me actually doing uh, doing a little voiceover uh, in the clip that I'm going to send you guys. So which, which Facebook page are you talking about? Yours or Todd's yeah. or no Danny mine? Or? And it, but it's on the merch truck. Uh, I think it's merch on the truck. merch truck. Yeah. Okay. One of the things we should probably right. point out is that. Um, it's on the web, RadioWoodstock.com. Right. So if you are not within listening range of the radio station, you can listen wherever you are in the world. And yeah, anytime, too. The, all the shows are archived. So you could uh, just log on at any point and listen to uh, one of the radio shows. There you go. That's awesome. Super. Uh, 
Yeah, we look forward to seeing the behind the scenes videotape of Chasm yeah. recording. You know, makes me think like these movies where somebody's a cartoon character, you know, and they get the microphone. And it's going to be like that kind of. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. All right, good deal. Well, hey, we appreciate it. It's nice meeting you, Bob. Same thanks here. Yeah. Thanks so much, and thanks so much for doing this with us, guys. We really, really appreciate it. It's really We appreciate sweet. you guys doing it. It's good to learn about what's going on these days in the yeah. radio world. So, yeah. All right, RadioWoodstock.com, check it out. Thank you. Thank you. So we thought it would be fun for you to see just a little bit of, of how I actually record the radio show. Uh, this is just my part. There's a, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes on behind the scenes that uh, you guys don't see. But what I do is each week uh, I sit down at my home recording studio, same place that I make music from, and uh, I, I have a list of the features and the songs that we've chosen for that week's show. Uh, and I go through it, uh, make little notes, uh, talk about stuff that I would, I think you would find interesting, that interests me. Uh, for instance, this week we're going to be playing songs from Boston. There's uh, new music from Patti Smythe. Uh, we're playing a Paul McCartney song, George Harrison, Thin Lizzy, and a bunch of other stuff. And I, I, make, I just make little notes about what I think it would be cool to talk about. I sit at my microphone, and uh, I have a conversation with my microphone just like I'm having a conversation with you. Um, when I'm done with each little segment, uh, I play it back a little bit. This week, we'll feature some new music from an old friend who just released her first album in 28 years. It's my world. See, I'm talking about Patti Smythe at that point. So each little segment is its own file. Uh, and, and then what I do is I take those files, I send them off to the production team, and they put that together with the music, and uh, at the end of, uh, of, of their job, of their work, we take that hour and send it off to WDST, and that's what you hear every Sunday night. Sorry, had us muted. His studio sure looks different than mine. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. He doesn't have this great album poster that I have, and you have. Okay, so we've one-upped him on that <laughs> one point. Yeah, we, we got these giant wall posters. All <laughs> right. Oh, look at my chair. It's getting all crazy. Okay, so uh, if you if you just saw that, you must be excited about watching the show or listening to the show. Listening to the show. Yes, you got to listen. Be, yeah, and what, 15 minutes? I think so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. We don't want to be competing with him. You don't want to what? I said, we don't want to be competing with Kazim Sultan. So. No, we don't. So no. We're not going to. No. We're just going to tell you to check it out if you want. And it's at RadioWoodstock.com. Starts at 7 o'clock Eastern time every Sunday night. And as Kazim said, it's archived. That's true. So are our shows. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen, I thought of something, though, um, that I forgot to mention uh, when we were talking about our Halloween party. Mm -hmm. The Toto Lanterns. Uh, there is a deadline, and mm -hmm. it's October 25th. So you still have time mm -hmm. to get your pictures of your carved or drawn on, painted on uh, Toto Lanterns to Veronica. So October 25th. Todd or mm -hmm. Ooh, We're going to have a spooky old time, aren't we, on Halloween? Yes. And now everybody knows what to get Cruzamel for her birthday. What? Uh, what? Donuts. <laughs> you know what's funny is I don't even like donuts. Not that much. <laughs> you need them for the show. All right, well, everybody. It might be good. Mm -hmm. RadioWoodstock.com. Be there, be square. 13 minutes.